Excellent. <laughs> As announced, the federal government is going to reintroduce its Be Alert, Not Alarmed Community Awareness Program. We've got millions of fridge magnets left in the warehouse and all of them have got to go! <laughs> But they won't be using taxpayers' money this time. They're actually being sponsored by another of Labor's enemies. They won't say who, but the new slogan will read, Be Mcalert, not Mcalarmed. <laughs> Congrats! <laughs> News from the cinema triumph of the will. An Australian Jesuit priest and doctor of film studies says people don't get spiritual meaning from the church anymore, they get it from the cinema. According to Father Richard Leonard, as congregation numbers dwindle, people are going to the movies to encounter big stories, seek ethical information and seriously examine metaphysics. I know that's why I saw Dumb and Dumber too. <laughs> While some Jesus statue in Brisbane might sweat blood and rose oil, these days you only see the real miracles at the cinema, like the miracle of The Matrix, where a film and two sequels were made with only half a plot. <laughs> or The Lord of the Rings, Holy Trinity, where one short, fat New Zealand director was able to feed an entire country. <laughs> If they want to attract more worshippers, churches should follow the movies. More action sermons with loads of special effects and Saturday night date sermons to encourage teenagers to come and pass in the back pews. <laughs> and communion wafers in large, holier than thou and bigger than Jesus. <laughs> I guess. Tell you what. Tell us. Guess what? what? I'm happy this week. Ooh. Yeah, because finally someone has come out and said it. What? There is too many street signs yeah, yeah. in this country, in this state, in this city, which is Sydney if you're not here. Um, <laughs> seriously, the, the, the Lord Mayor, uh, uh, Clover Moore. I've always loved Clover. <laughs> he makes me feel gentle. <laughs> <It's sad. laughs> Clover's a woman, by the way. Clover's a woman. Good on her. <laughs> anyway, Clover has said... But anyway, there's a, apparently in Surrey Hills, which is a suburb in Sydney, there's a street called Burke Street where there's, a, there's street signs every four and a half metres. That is too... And that's not right. We don't need this. We only need one street sign or one sign on the roads at all. It's, it should say, don't crash, it hurts. <laughs> There's another street in Sydney where there's the speed limit is 10 kilometres an hour. You cannot, you can't even walk that slow. <laughs> that is ridiculous. And it's 10 kilometres an hour because the street's so narrow that the, the cars have to park on the footpath. So the people have to walk on the road. <laughs> what is going on in this city? <laughs> Thank God I don't live here. Let's get to it. <laughs> I was so glad you were happy. <laughs> Joining me, Corinne and Dave, to throw some stones in the glass house tonight from Neighbours to the Bill, back to Australia and beyond, Daniel McPherson. The most feared competitor in world netball, the captain of Australia, Liz Ellis! All right, movers and shakers. First up, researchers at Melbourne University who found that while money isn't as important as getting married or finding a job, it does matter more to people's happiness than previously thought. Apparently the researchers were quite unhappy until they got a grant to study the effect of money on happiness. <laughs> then after they got the grant, they were much happier. <laughs> but in terms of real happiness, researchers found it's not what you earn, it's what you own. And there are lots of reasons why stuff makes us happy. Having stuff means you can sit on stuff so you don't have to stand all the time. When you have stuff, you can put stuff on shelves. Otherwise, those shelves are a waste of money. If someone breaks into your house, you can hide behind stuff or throw stuff at him. And when no-one's looking, you can have sex with stuff. Hell yeah. <laughs> I love that Daniel McPherson just went, hell yeah! Hell yeah. Daniel, you're an international megastar. Does your extraordinary wealth make you happy? 
Does wealth make me happy? Ah, uh, look, I'm happier when I'm playing golf with brand new golf clubs. I'm happier when I'm driving a new car. But I, look, I think this is a question for Willie Mason, not me. Does does money make you happy? I don't know. Um, look, I think question it, for Willie Mason. Yeah, I, that's I an think, interesting. Uh... Well, I think yeah. Anyway, look, we'll, we'll not go down that avenue. <laughs> <laughs> think that money doesn't make you happier. That is ridiculous. I think rich people th say that. Yeah, so that poor people don't money, rob them. Seriously. I just got back. I just went on a holiday to Hawaii with my beautiful young girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> does money make you happy? Yes, it does. <laughs> I also have a feeling that the beautiful young girlfriend is making you happy as yeah. well. Yes. Yeah. I, know. I think it was Dave's money that got him the beautiful young girlfriend. <laughs> Very cynical thing to say. <laughs> but not true. I mean, no, yeah, I mean, obviously, that, I mean, money's good. <laughs> <laughs> On that point, desperately trying to save Dave, mm. there was uh, there was another study done kind of at the same time or in con conjunction with this that said that people who have sex four times a month are the equivalent in happiness to people who earn $71,000 more than them. You know the only people that's going to make happy is the tax department. Yeah, if you have hookers. sex four times a week, they're going to start taxing us on that $71,000. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's going to be no good when you roll over from your partner and go, oh, can I have a receipt? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's going to kill the romance when you go, do you have an ABN? <laughs> but if you've got a lot of money, you can buy a lot of sex, can't you? Or be like Dave and get a nice girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, she is lovely. <laughs> she's very yeah, lovely. That's not true. The thing is, she's got a sense of humour, so I can do those jokes and I don't get bashed when I get home. <laughs> <laughs> I had um, the funny thing about because like we choose I mean to work at the ABC which you know isn't necessarily the big cash option <laughs> but you do get the the classier level of you know um, fans of the program. I was in uh, Brisbane the other day and there's this dude across from me who was the toughest looking dude I'd ever seen in my life. His tattoos had tattoos mm. like he was like <laughs> he was so tough and he just looked at me and went you glass house come here and he just said to me he goes I'm addicted to your program. I got addicted to it when I was in prison. Yay! And he said, this is what he said next. He went, they made me watch it. <laughs> what was going on in prison? Apparently that's part of the punishment. <laughs> Did he want you to be his girlfriend? Too much time on the set of the bill. <laughs> that's that's the bill uncut. You're nicked. <laughs> Dan, you, you better make sure you pay all your taxes, though. I mean, if you went to prison, oi. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. a pretty boy and you used to be a cop. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your daddy? Yeah. Which would you give up? If you had to give up either sex or money, which would you give up? Um, money. Does that include money. yourself? <laughs> 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 Yeah, I tell you what, I tell that's, you what, a, that's, no, a, that's a good question, man. Yeah. And you know, there's probably a lot of young men, lonely young men at home on a Friday night think, no, it would love to know that you do it too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or a lot of men in prison. <laughs> 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 Our next movers and shakers come from the UK in a bid to lure British men away from the tally and into bookshops. Penguin Publishers is sending out sexy models to offer a thousand pound prizes to blokes spotted reading a selected title. <laughs> if the campaign doesn't work, Penguin will just have to try putting glossy photos of girls with big tits in Jane Austen novels. Hot diggity! <laughs> They would have liked that one in prison, too. <laughs> They've also commissioned a new film about books called Comprehend It Like Beckham. <laughs> the only problem being that Beckham doesn't actually know what comprehend means. <laughs> and he can't text message <laughs> In related news, a new poll found 85% of women said a man could increase his chances of getting a date by talking about a favourite book. But once you've found Wally, what else is there to talk about? <laughs> Korean you found Wally, does reading make you sexy? I think so. I find men who read attractive. Do you find them attractive, like, when they're reading or...? No, no. Just, like, when they, when they say they read, like, do you own the libraries and go, ooh? No, <laughs> it's something... <laughs> no, 
<laughs> it gives you something to talk about, is what I mean. The and post also, reading. Yes, mm. yeah, yeah. Post so read. what have you read lately? And you can also tell stuff about people from the kind of books they read, I think. Mm. Yeah, yeah well, you go up to a guy, what have you been reading? Oh, I've been reading Hop on Pop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I used to buy books when I was younger, thinking exactly that girls would find me sexy. It didn't really work, so I just ended up buying pornos. <laughs> I used to love reading when I was little. Like I've always been a massive reader, and I thought I'd marry someone who like was really literary. Yeah. Matthew reads golf magazines once a month. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's it. Once a so month. what do you talk about? We talk like, about golf. Oh, really? Really? And does, that, and does that get you in the mood? He's like, oh, ooh, let I me wouldn't show mind you. a hole in one. <laughs> 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 ooh, look at my new wood. <laughs> I, don't think he's got, I think he's got the wrong way around because I don't like... Yeah, anyway. You... <laughs> <laughs> Let's play golf. You be Greg Norman and choke. <laughs> Disgusting, but you've got to admire the speed. <laughs> Do you mind if I put my ball in your bunker? <laughs> we could go for hours on this, couldn't we? We could. No, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Our favourite movement shaker this week is a lecturer at Victoria University is doing a PhD on the distinctive sounds of the AFL. Margaret Trail wants to unravel why footy means so much to people by analysing such things as barracking, gossip and non-language sounds like sighing and moaning. Studying the sounds of rugby league is even easier. You just give out your mobile number and wait. <laughs> when she's finished, Margaret hopes to have a complete oral picture of the game so it can be even enjoyed by visually impaired people, like umpires. <laughs> Liz, you're our sporting hero tonight. What are the sounds of netball like? Nothing like football. Netball crowds are pretty um, polite and the difference, like, you hear... Like, when you're playing, you hear just the roar of the crowd. It's a, it's a dull roar, but... I guess in netball it's more of a dull squeal because it's a lot of twelve-year-old <laughs> girls there. I, I, I went and saw you play netball, and it was like being at a Robbie Williams concert. This <laughs> <laughs> is Nana. She was seriously about seventy, and she was just—you were defending obviously someone she really liked. She was like, "Get off her, Alice! Get off her, you bitch! Get off her! Get off her! Oh, you're a mongrel! Get off her!" And then she went for a big closer, and I was God, this is what she said. She went, "You know what that GD stands for on your top?" And I thought, oh, this is going to be the worst thing. Oh, no. She's gone, giant dunderhead. <laughs> I was like, Ooh. But dunderhead, is that, I mean, that's the worst thing you get called as a netballer. But the only person, like you hear the crowd and that sort of stuff, the only person who I've learned to block out is that coach. She's got rather a, like a shrill sort of voice. So mm. I don't listen sound? to her. <laughs> you... No, I can't do it. No, 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 give us a go. Um, she's having a go at you. She's having a go at me. Yeah, move your feet! Move your feet! <laughs> I'm sounds... so going to be dropped the next game. <laughs> <laughs> I used to play netball myself. I played for a season, yeah. What position? I was a goal, I was goal keeper. Were you, yeah, were you yeah, reading was... at the same time, What though? was that? <laughs> were you reading at the same time? <laughs> no, I, but I, I got... I, I got I, they stopped me from playing because I, I, I got drunk once before the game. <laughs> That's uh, not, you thought you were playing tennis, obviously, for Australia in the Davis Cup doing that. Yeah, who yeah. did that? Mark Philippoussis and those guys did that. They played drunk. Yeah, years they, ago, they'd, won, they'd, they'd won already. So on the last day when they had to play the dead rubbers, they just rocked up pissed. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, totally. And I think Philippoussis has been pissed ever since. Oh, <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't even know he's d dating Delta. He thinks it's Shannon Noel. <laughs> <laughs> what? He's blind. <laughs> I treat football as a religion, I think. It should be studied. It is, for me... Your is... lovely young girlfriend told me that you get depressed when... Is it Carlton? Yeah, the Carlton, yeah, I when do. When they lose. I do don't get you think depressed. that's taking it a little bit far? No, I don't think it's taking it too far. <laughs> I, for me, it is my religion, it is. And I am a devout follower of football. I don't get football. Get... No, there's too many teams. Oh, I love football. All those boys <laughs> running around. 16 teams, I 16 can't teams at 16, that. lots of gorgeous young men running around in little shorts and... Shirts and They're stuff. not gorgeous. They go around groping women and raping them. <laughs> not, not all of them. No, only, only a small percentage of them. Not all the women. <laughs> <laughs> There's a roster system. Yeah. Have you ever yelled anything out at a sporting event? Have you had anything I've yelled at heckled. you? I've been heckled. I was presenting something at a, a, a Teen X Games in Melbourne and I was going up on stage. What is Teen X? Can you uh, skateboarding. That? Oh, yeah, like they have on the TV. Yeah, right. right. And I was walking up on stage and this 12-year-old girl yelled out, lose some weight and get a skateboard. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so I was a little bit portly at the time, but <laughs> and I actually had to get a yeah. skateboard. Yeah, she was twelve, bitch. And did... <laughs> Coming to get you. My favourite moment of those was out of Sporting Ground. This is a, a true story. It was when Tony Lockett had just come to Sydney and people were mad at Tony Lockett and yeah. they were going him for being oh, a bit overweight. Yeah, yeah. And Sydney were getting killed and so Lockett's down this end and there's just the ball was never coming down here. And Lockett was just getting... And this guy's thought he's a real smart ass, And it, like, you could hear it so well. He's just stood up and he's going, Hey, Tony, I'm going to get some pies. You want one? <laughs> right. But the best thing was, and I did say it, this is true, Lockett has just looked around and gone, Get me turned. On your plugger. Later in the glass house, Condoleezza Rice explains why Mr Squiggle and his friends are being held without trial at Guantanamo Bay. These are not America's uh, puppets. <laughs> Peter Garrett reveals the phrase he uses to turn into his secret Labor Party identity. Super significant man. Today is a super significant day for me. <laughs> and at the International Wooden Leg of Stedford, dancers engage in the traditional check each other's legs for dry rot dance. Tonight's question on the glass house is what's the worst thing your partner's ever caught you doing? All right, let's find some answers. What's the worst thing, right? I was uh, watching uh, Question Time on the ABC. Oh, that's sick. <laughs> Pretty sick, isn't it? Yeah, you weren't like getting off though. Oh, don't want to comment on that. <laughs> What's the worst thing your partner's ever caught you doing? I was drying my hair one morning and I was a bit cold, so I actually stuffed it up my shirt. So you were blowing, basically, you had a hairdryer yeah, up your shirt, shirt like onto your um, chest region. Yes, that would be correct, yes. <laughs> Would the, the hairdryer become part of your uh, play from then on? Uh, no, not really. It got a bit too hot after oh, a while. <laughs> What's the worst thing your partner's ever caught you doing? Um, she's caught me now. I'm here with her sister. Oh, you're not, are you? It's Which... actually her sister. She's right here. <laughs> what? Caught me, um, selling her clothes. You're selling her clothes? Why? To pay for my phone bill. <laughs> <laughs> What's the worst thing you've caught him doing? Probably doing a bit of a dance. On his own. In the lounge room? In the lounge room. Thinking he's Tom Cruise? Indeed. In his undies? <laughs> I don't know if I can say. You can say. <laughs> yeah, in his undies. his undies. undies. <laughs> Not a nude, was it? No, no. Yeah, he's on his own. Yeah. Is he a boxer or a brief man? Uh, it depends on his mood. Uh, playing street poker, poker uh, putting on a G-string actually rather than taking clothes off and walking around in the smallest G-string you've ever seen. Smallest one you've ever, ever seen in your life. Oh, so he was hanging out. Oh, both sides. Oh, splitting you down the middle. Apparently, that was a, that's a true cut lunch, I tell you. That's a <laughs> Ian, unhappy news for the unfaithful. Researchers in Atlanta have discovered they can turn promiscuous animals into monogamous ones simply by transferring a gene. The study used small furry mammals called voles. And let's face it, even in humans, promiscuity is all about small furry creatures that like to burrow. <laughs> After receiving a gene that produces particular hormone receptors, the swinging voles stop playing around. Researchers now want to try the same experiment on the greater horny root rat, the Patagonian slut mouse <laughs> and the mad for beaver beaver. <laughs> Cusy, I'd like your help. Sure, yeah. I want you to be a scientific research vole. All right, yeah, why not? <laughs> oh, you're so cute. I think you, know you should have put the nose on should've first. Should have put the nose on first, <laughs> but I made it. Is that right? <laughs> Whiskers up a bit. Hey, lady, don't touch my whiskers unless you're going to go the whole way. <laughs> well, that begs the first question, Small Fairy Dave. Are you a promiscuous vole or a monogamous vole? Uh, is my wife going to see this? Because <laughs> <laughs> it uh, depends. It depends so on you, what. So you're married, though? I am married, yeah. Are you happily married? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Happy when we're... Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy, yeah. Can you actually explain to me what a vole is? Uh, I can't explain it to you, but I can show you one. <laughs> oh, okay, then, show yeah, me one. Yeah, well, you're looking at one. <laughs> How often do you and your wife vole 
get it on, Vol style. How often do we get it on? Yeah. Uh, every, pretty much all time. <laughs> every, yeah, all time. Man. How often? How often does a Vol oh, mate? I can't count them a Vol. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you have? Do you have any other partners other than your wife? Uh, well, look, what, 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 what do you classify as a partner? <laughs> Is there someone else who makes you happy? Oh, I like to think that I make other people happy. <laughs> Are you concerned that you're going to have this gene transplanted into you to make you be monogamous? Uh, I'm looking forward to the uh, to the operation. <laughs> then, uh, it's, uh, yeah, I'm, look, it's, it's not. I don't like being promiscuous, but it's it's in my genes. You know? <laughs> and if I, someone could stop me wanting to bang all the other vials. <laughs> I could relax with my good missus and we could have a bloody family together. <laughs> Why did you get married in the first place if you want to root around so much? Oh, just, just the pressure from my family. <laughs> well, she was pregnant. <laughs> How do Vols do it? We do it Vol style. <laughs> What involves, is it? It, it, look, what, what does that involve? I've got a nose, I've got ears, maybe I've got something else, all right? <laughs> maybe she's got something and maybe we put those two things together and we bloody jump around and before you know it, it's vile heaven. <laughs> is your wife promiscuous as well? Uh, you know do you mean that she bang other vile? Yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, I don't know. I mean, I'm away a lot banging. <laughs> Is there any humans you think should have this gene switched? In uh, there? yeah. I think John Howard should have it. Uh, yeah, he needs to get out a bit more. <laughs> I'd like to see him. He's got vile eyebrows, hasn't he? He's got, he has got vile eyebrows. Yeah, you Sorry? said it better than me. <laughs> <laughs> we say eyebrows different than we say eyebrows. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have um, Do you have any plans for the future, uh, you and the missus? Uh, yeah, we're hoping that one day we'll be able to uh, just just uh, we we want to uh, we we we're looking to uh, to move to Queensland. <laughs> Unfortunately, the researchers witnessed a scary moment during a torrid vole affair when a lady vole came home to find a human boiling in a pot on the stove. <laughs> Yes, it's time to watch the Covered Glass House Trophy, which this week is called. And the winner of the green, green grass of home pigskin beanbag is New Zealand man Ivan Churcher, who has sadly passed away. Ivan made headlines around the world in the 80s after he revealed he liked to smoke marijuana with his pet pig, Barry. <laughs> The story first came out when Ivan was arrested for cultivating 380 cannabis plants. He pleaded guilty but got off after claiming the plants were for him and the pig. <laughs> the downside was Barry used to really hog the bong. <laughs> Ivan and the porker even became part of the local folklore. They're responsible for the phrase, happy as a pig in really good shit. <laughs> Sadly, Barry passed away a few years ago and was made into the first BLT to give you the munchies. <laughs> so the trophy goes to the pig-headed pothead Ivan Churcher. He's been cremated this weekend. Friends and relatives are asked to stand downwind. <laughs> well, that's the way it is for Friday, July the 2nd. Thank you very much, Liz. Thank Pleasure. you, Daniel. abc.net.au slash glasshouse. Another entry in the competition next week. Keep them coming. And let's take a look at tomorrow's headlines. The Daily Tally has Iraq Reborn but just misses out on $3,000 baby bonus. <laughs> In the Courier Mail, new text message speed champ. Runner-up was sexed massage seed chimp. <laughs> the Tizer reports Hussein and doubles to stay in US-run jail. Plans for first all-Saddam nude pyramid. <laughs> and the UK Mail says Princess Diana Memorial Fountain turned on. Flows into tunnel, stops dead. <laughs> If you're in the Sydney area and want to join Will, Corinne and Dave in the Glasshouse audience, call 02 9383 4741 on Monday. That's 02 9383 4741.